Good morning, my friend. Early in the morning on 9 September 2022. Hope you're doing well. It's uh, 30 good decisions. We've been talking about different ways to make decisions about what you're going to do on a given day or a given month or a week or whatever. And just just kind of focusing our idea that every day we should be making at least one good decision. Now, beyond the normal day-to-day things that we all do that are good, just just make a decision that's going to change the arc of how your day plays out or how your impact plays out or how your your influence on someone else plays out. Just, just making good decisions. We've been talking about all kinds of different things. And today I want to talk about something that John Swanson, my friend over at 300 Words a Day, dot com 300 the number 300 words a day dot com is john swanson's daily blog i think every day but saturday um and john's just always kind of writing some thought-provoking thing and the other day he he mentioned his old book or his former book uh, a great work which is kind of a work through the book of nehemiah in the old testament about building the wall of the city and and the great work that nehemiah was called to and john did a little post a week or two ago that was just about how do you tell if, if a work is great and how do you tell if it's for you and then in the same day that i read that james clear's weekly blog um, which if you're not reading james clear he wrote a book called atomic habits which is really helpful for just kind of organizing your your habits and, and your productivity and your systems in your life to help you be more productive and james clear's um, blog had a, a little thought about uh, this sort of idea about doing great things on the same day that i read that and it's just kind of something i wanted to to bring to you and it kept getting busy and busy and i've got surgery early again today it's the fourth week in a row that we've had to do an extra surgery day um and so i don't have much time this morning because the the old day job <laughs> is is interfering but i want to bring you this one thought just one quick little thought um in a song new song from tommy walker that he just released yesterday rest sweet rest is one of the soulful scripture songs that he's released so i want to finish with that and we'll just use this sort of as a a little thought process filter for you to have today as you go through your day uh, and you're trying to make good decisions this will be one to kind of help you decide on some great things that you might be able to decide on and do uh, with your life and and the good news about all that is you can you can use these things to help change your mind about the work of your hands and the way that you engage with the world in a given day and how you follow your dreams and your passions and all those things this should be a little quick little thought process to, to guide you a little bit and we'll finish with tommy's new great song rest sweet rest Uh, and as always lisa's going to tell us how we can do that starting today hey are you ready to change your life if the answer is yes there's only one rule you have to change your mind first and my friend there's a place where the neuroscience of how your mind works smashes together with faith and everything starts to make sense that place is called self-brain surgery you can learn it and it will help you become healthier feel better and be happier And the good news is, you can start today. Thanks, Lisa. Hey, so glad to have you listening today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I live in Nebraska in the United States of America with my incredible wife, Lisa, my father-in-law, Tata, and the super pups, Harvey and Lewis. I'm a neurosurgeon and an author, and I'm here to help you harness neuroscience, the power of your brain, faith, the power of your spirit, and good old common sense to help you lead a healthier, better, happier life. Listen, friend, you can't change your life until you change your mind, and I'm here to help you learn the art of self-brain surgery. To get it done, you can get the show notes and more at drleewarren.podbean.com. That's drleewarren.podbean.com, and if you like the show... Please subscribe so you never miss an episode and tell your friends about it. If you tell two or three friends this podcast was helpful to you, imagine how much good we can all do around the world together. I'm Dr. Lee Warren, and I'm here to help you change your mind so you can change your life. Let's get after it. All right, so let me tell you what John Swanson said. John wrote a great post, and I got his permission to sort of just quote him on this. Um, he said it was great to share his work. So he, he had this email called What Makes a Work Great? So sometimes we feel like we're being called to something, something big, starting a business, starting a ministry, you know, changing jobs, marrying somebody, doing these things, maybe starting a nonprofit, maybe doing something that seems big and scary. Maybe writing a book might be that for you. Maybe losing weight, maybe ending a relationship that's not appropriate, maybe stopping a habit that's been hurting you, something that feels that's important and big in your life that God's calling you to and and your heart is telling you it's time to do this thing or 
something that you've never even thought of before that seems thrust in your path and and all of a sudden it's kind of taking up a lot of bandwidth in your brain and you feel like you're being called to it lisa and her sister um jessica went to uh, lisa's sister jessica went to rwanda recently uh, and she's a primary school teacher uh, at a private school and, and her life's work has been about teaching children how to read and developing better pathways to helping educate children and develop programs for education and educators and educating teachers how to do these things across the, the country and now the world and she was invited to go over to Rwanda and help set up a school and all this cool stuff and while she was there she discovered this mother and young child young young group of children who don't have a home they're living in a termite mud hut basically that's infested with termites and just this horrible thing and jessica and lisa did some research and they found out that they can basically build a house with with water and and uh, shelter and and a much more comfortable environment for this family for a ridiculously low amount of money by our standards and they're being called now maybe to, to get into this idea of helping people find housing in these third world countries and and it's something that they're that they're chewing on and praying about and, and it's an opportunity to get involved in something practical and real and it feels like a great work right so john says how do you know if something is a great work well here's here's what john says if if, if it's a great work something about it will make you weep when nehemiah heard this this uh the fact that the walls of the city that he loved, Jerusalem, had been broken down, it, it broke his heart and he wept before God. Like the, his, He had passion for the city and he was weeping that his city had fallen into such disrepair and that God's people were um, had allowed this to occur. And it made him weep. And when, when I walked into the room and Lisa was reading a message from Jessica and she was just in deep like agony. I saw her face and she was weeping and crying and her heart was torn. And she showed me this story and these pictures of, of this family and this young woman and her children who are just living in squalor and they don't have any any safety or shelter and it made her weep and john says that the work if, if it's a great work and, and it's real that you're being called to it it's bigger than you are hugely so like nehemiah i'm going to rebuild the whole city that's bigger than i am putting wells in every village in a country in africa no homeless children in your community one particular person in your neighborhood knowing that they're listened to and loved that's a big work that's bigger than you right so you're being called to something that's larger than you are it's not just i'm going to start this ministry and put my name on it and you know i'm going to do all these great things and be the public face and people are going to say what, what a great work i'm doing it's not that it's bigger than you so it makes you weep, and it's bigger than you. And John, the third point John made, you have to take a lot of small steps that don't even seem like they'll get you anywhere. Think about how Nehemiah's crew built that wall. It started with one rock at a time, one brick at a time. And so my dad always says, you're going to eat an elephant. You take one bite at a time. And all these little steps don't seem very important until all of a sudden some time has passed and the work has continued and you've got some progress made. That segues into what James Clear wrote about on the same day that I read John's work. James Clear said this on his website is jamesclear.com. No, hard to hard to forget that, right? James Clear, C L E A R dot com. James Clear dot com. Every week, every Thursday, he sends out a three two one little little uh, email that's great and it's very helpful um, not spiritual at all but just great wisdom kind of organizational stuff and here's what he said that same day so i feel like it's a god thing I got these two emails in the same day james clear said be great in small ways writing 100 words a day doesn't seem worthwhile when you see people publishing bestsellers exercising for 10 minutes doesn't seem very valuable when you see world records posted on instagram but winning the next 10 minutes of your life I said your life. He said, winning the next 10 minutes is its own form of greatness. People are so busy wishing for more time and better resources that they fail to make the most of the time and the resources they have be great in small ways, and you may be surprised by what you've achieved within a year or two. Friend, this is the secret to unlocking generational wealth for your family. If, if you've got young children, start an investment account for them and put 10 or 15 or 20 or 25 or 50 or $100 or however much you can afford into that thing every month for your kids. Every month, little bits of money that you can scrape up. By the time they're 18, if you leave it alone and never touch it, then when they retire at 60 or 65, that little account that you built up over the course of all those little tiny deposits that you made will be worth a couple of million dollars. Just do that research and look at the power of compounding over time. Those little 5 and 10 and 15 and 25 and $100 deposits that you make for your kids now can create generational security and financial freedom for them and their children. 
if you just take that little step. So James Clear said, be great in small ways, right? So these little things that we don't seem important, like John says, stacking those bricks up, eventually all of a sudden you can start to see and other people can start to see, wait a minute, we got a wall going here. You guys were just putting bricks down, but now we can start to see it. We can start to get behind this idea that you're building something that really matters. And maybe if people start building houses in Rwanda and they do a two or three of them, maybe somebody else gets involved and somebody with deeper pockets says, wait a minute, this, this could work. And let's take this whole village and make sure nobody's homeless. Maybe something like that could start to, to progress and turn into a real thing that makes a huge impact in the world for the kingdom, right? So, so something about it makes you weep and it's bigger than you are and you have to take a lot of small steps that don't seem like they're going to get you anywhere. Write that hundred words today got a friend named Christy who writes books and it's been a while since she wrote and the other day on Instagram I just challenged her a little bit hey write us another book we need another one of your books Christy through it and you know the way you do it is you write a little bit every day and then all of a sudden you've got a story that's making sense and starts building up and and all of a sudden you've got a book right it doesn't just pop out of your head you just it's a lot of little steps that take place over a long period of time it makes you weep it's bigger than you you have to take lots of small steps and then john says doing the work transforms you so when you call to this big work you'll realize hey if i get into this thing it's going to necessitate some changes in my life i'm going to have to scrape off some things that don't give me the time to do that i'm going to have to make some changes nehemiah was not a seasoned leader when that project started. He grew into one over time because he was called to that work and he recognized that he was going to have to become better at organizing and inspiring and leading people in order to accomplish the great work to which he was called. And then God calls you to do it. John says this very well. I know this one can creep people out. We don't like to hear people say, God called me to do this or God told me to do this. It scares us. And sometimes we think they're crazy or we think they're just manipulating us. But Nehemiah clearly believed that God was giving him this work. We don't always understand the mechanics of God's calling. And we have clear and tragic examples, John says, of people who attach the name of God to their own projects. But Nehemiah was clearly responding to the direction that God had given him. And I'm going to give you one simple little test. 1 John chapter 4 says that we can test spirits. He says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see whether they're from God. So in other words, you feel called to something. Check it out and be diligent and pray about it and say, God, is this really you? Are you calling me to this? John says, many false prophets have gone out into the world claiming that they're from God. By this, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. And this sounds kind of murky and hard to understand if you're not into spiritual things. But what he's basically saying is, if you put it before God and you pray about it and you say, God, infuse this, make it possible only if it's for you, only if it's from you, only if it's real, only if you're calling me to it. And put roadblocks up if it's not. And you'll feel those roadblocks. You'll feel that tug in your spirit that says, wait a minute, maybe I'm doing this for me. Maybe this isn't really where I'm supposed to invest myself. And you'll, you'll know the difference between God's leading and his opposition and and sort of a false leading or false roadblocks that come along. Because there's always going to be opposition, right? You'll know in your heart, this is a challenge I can overcome or I'm being told here that this is this is a no. I'm not supposed to follow this. You'll know. It's pretty clear. If you put yourself and test that spirit, pray about it, fast about it if you need to, th- think clearly through it. Don't just jump on everything that feels like it might be a good opportunity. So God calls you to do it. And John says, it matters enough that you ache when you can't accomplish it quickly enough. And it's big enough that you can't accomplish it quickly enough. That's really important. So you, you hurt for it. You long for it. You have passion for it. You, you want those kids to have a better place to live. And you know it's going to take time to do it right. So you're not going to just rush into it. And it hurts you that it's going to take time. But at the same time, you know you have to do that work properly. Those guys building that wall, if they didn't you know, put the cement down right, if they mixed it too thin, if they took cut corners or didn't do the job right and got those walls up quickly, then they would fall down, right? If you don't do it right... You're not going to accomplish what God's calling you to, and the, and the great work that you've been called to will not be great, and it won't honor Him, and it won't accomplish its purpose because you didn't do it right. You went too fast. So it hurts you that you can't go fast enough, but you know you've got to take the time to get it done. John says, every day working on a great project excites you, drains you, and some days blesses you. 
and this is a, an important one, the work is not about you. It's a tough one. The great work is about somebody else, about other things. It's about a bigger mission than you. It's not about you. I'm losing weight, but it's not a great work if I do that. My, my weight loss goal is not a great work I'm being called to, right? Now, it may be me getting more fit so I can have more stamina, so I can serve people better, so I can accomplish more, so I can work harder and achieve more and live longer and inspire more people or whatever. Maybe me changing my my lifestyle will inspire other people to do so. Maybe that is a great work, right? But it's not about me in that context. John says, it takes so long that you can't do it in a day, but the choices of each day matter in whether you can get it done can't do it in one day but the choices you make like like james clear said be great in small ways so make those good daily choices those good daily decisions those 30 good decisions if you will as i'm talking about this month this is why we're talking about this today takes so long you can't do it in a day but the choices of each day matter in whether you can get it done and every day you have to choose to take those steps we mentioned earlier every single day put those bricks down Make sure they're, they're square. Make sure that wall's going up the right way every day. Great things in small ways. And finally, there are two more. You may not know anything about how to do the work. That's, Nehemiah was called to do something he had never done before. Lisa's never built a house in Africa before. Jessica's never done that before. That you're being called to something big. You know it's not about you. You know it's going to take time. You know you're going to have to transform yourself to get it done and to be able to be malleable enough to God that you've got to change because you have no idea how to do this thing you're being called to do. You have no clue how to do this but you're being called to it. It may have nothing to do with your job that you do currently for a living. In fact, it may cause you to leave your job or start a new job, learn how to do a new thing. And the final one, you cannot not do it. Once you know you're called to it and you know it's bigger than you, it's not about you, it's a great thing God's calling you to that's going to take time, it's going to take transformation in your heart, it's going to take the ability for you to learn how to do something different than you've ever done before, then you can't not do that. You've got to do that thing. And you know with all your heart that you've got to be fully all in, making that decision to go for it and get after it. There's a story from the, from the Civil War. We told it before on the podcast. Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain and his men are on top of Little Round Top, and the rebels are coming. They're vastly outnumbered. They're out of ammo. And they've got to hold that high ground or the battle's going to be lost. And Chamberlain said later in his life, after they, they, he called for a bayonet charge, and they charged down the hill, and 80 or so Union soldiers captured several thousand Confederate soldiers and turned the tide of that battle and won the hill and kept the high ground and overcame, and Gettysburg was won and not lost, and it changed the whole flavor and course of the Civil War. And that's why we have one United States and not two countries here, because that battle was really a turning point in the war. And Chamberlain Chamberlain later in his life said, I had an inability to do nothing. I just couldn't sit there and surrender or retreat. I had to do something. And that's what John says. You can't not do it. Once you know this is the great work to which you're called, you can't not do it. So John Swanson inspired that. I hope it's helpful to you. And I want to give you one more thing to think about. So we're making good decisions. Hebrews chapter 12. The first verse, we've talked about this before. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. So here's the, listen, I always lump these things together. Let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And in my mind, I've always lumped both of those into some, i got to get rid of sinful behavior category. Everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. But there's two things here. There's an and. Everything that hinders, he says, if you want to run this race, you need to throw off, cast off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. There's two things, which means not everything that hinders you in your race or in accomplishing your great work or in making a good decision, not everything that hinders you is sinful. Let that sit in for a minute. There's some things that are you are holding you back from being as productive or as successful or as at peace or as, as happy or as, as God-honoring or as mission-oriented as you can be, but they're not sinful. They're just sucking out your bandwidth. 
There's some things you're involved in that you don't need to be involved in, that that you're just saying yes to. No is an okay word. You can say no to things if it's not on mission for you. The holy no, I've called it. No is a complete sentence, our friend Dean Lynn Lucado used to say. So this is wisdom here. You're running a race. You're being called to something big. You've got a great work ahead of you or maybe a whole bunch of small works. And there's greatness in accomplishing those small things. And God's calling you to it. And he's saying, hey, you've got some stuff in your life that's holding you back. Maybe it's not sinful. Maybe you just are overscheduled. Maybe you need to learn how to rest. Maybe you need to learn how to get more sleep at night so you can be more focused the next day so your memory will get better, your your health will improve. Maybe you need to exercise more. Maybe you need to cut out some of the extracurricular activities that you're engaged in. Maybe you've got some friendships that are draining you that aren't helping you, and it's, it's time for a different season in your personal relationships. Maybe you've got too many things going on financially and you're overtaxed. Maybe, maybe. So think and pray about that. What's a good decision you could make to help you cast off something that's hindering you? That's not sinful. I'm not saying you gotta you know get the needle out of your arm, you know, get out of the crack house. That's not you. If you're listening to this podcast, you're probably not in that situation. So this is not necessarily some sinful thing that we're talking about. It's just something's hindering you, something's holding you back. So cut it out, cast it off, get rid of it. That's a good decision you could make today, friend. And sometimes that decision is just to rest a little bit and let God clear your mind. Let him minister to you by getting a little bit less hectic in your life. You're being called to a great work. Maybe it's not that season for you, but maybe you're being called to a whole bunch of smaller things or a single smaller thing that's just the right thing for you in this moment that God is is going to help you accomplish God's task and purpose and plan for your life. Maybe you need to rest. Tommy Walker's going to sing Rest Sweet Wet, Rest for us. I'm going to play it after the outro here in just a minute. It's a great new song, TommyWalkerMinistries.org. Check it out. The video's on there. Just a great song. And it'll help you just get this idea of sometimes you need to rest and refocus and reset and reframe and recharge and recreate yourself. And that's a good decision that you could make too. So I wanted to give John Swanson some some props today. This is a really good thought exercise for me. Thanks to James Clear and John Swanson. I'll put links to both of those in the show notes and also a copy of uh, the link to Tommy's new song. But just give, give an opportunity for yourself to evaluate the work that you feel you may be being called to today. Make some good decisions for your life. Think about the, the things that you could do the rest of September as we prepare for the fourth quarter of this year that would help you to be everything that God wants you to be, to change your mind and change your life, to become healthier and feel better and be happier and leave a mark and tell a good story with your life. And of all those things that you could do, the best one, my friend, is that you could start today. Hey, thanks for listening. The Dr. Lee Warren podcast is listener supported. Check out patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. That's patron.podbean.com slash Dr. Lee Warren. Patrons and partners get free books, transcripts, special patron only episodes and more. And partners like you allow us to stay ad free and keep growing. Please subscribe to the show so you automatically get every episode. And if you like the show, you'll love my weekly letter. Check out my writing at drleewarren.substack.com, drleewarren.substack.com. Get the free newsletter every week for my best prescriptions for becoming healthier, feeling better, and being happier through the power of faith and neuroscience smashing together via self-brain surgery. Dr. Lee Warren. Substack.com. And if you need prayer, go to the prayer wall at wleewarnmd.com slash prayer. The theme music for the show is Make Us One by Tommy Walker, graciously provided for free by the great folks over at TommyWalkerMinistries.org. Check it out and consider supporting them. TommyWalkerMinistries.org. Remember, you can't change your life until you change your mind. And the good news is you can start today. I'm Dr. Lee Warren. I'll talk to you soon. God bless you, friend. Have a great day. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Come, all who are weary, come, all who are burdened, come, and I will give you rest. Come.
your weary soul Oh, oh rest Sweet rest Where you feel no more No more Oh, peace And deep air You bow your knee, oh, set your gaze on me. Oh, peace and holy rest. When you place your hope, place your faith, place your trust all in me again. I 